Do you recall the joy of rushing home from school, tossing your backpack aside, and booting up your favorite video game to dive into a digital universe teeming with excitement? You could be a secret agent, an elite soldier, a mage, or even a plumber with an unusual fixation for mushrooms. Back then, games were straightforward. You paid for the title and popped it into your console or loaded it onto your PC. That's it. There were no hidden fees or unexpected costs. But then, something started to change. Gaming became less about conquering levels and more about acquiring stuff. Sure, the thrill of the game was still there, but now it came with extras. Virtual hats, dances, outfits, pets, skins, and even weapons. Items that don't affect your ability to play, but certainly add a unique twist to your character. As we fast forward to today's gaming world, these small in-game purchases, better known as microtransactions, have become a massive part of the industry. You've probably seen it in action, whether it's that snazzy new suit of armor in your RPG of choice, the premium loot boxes in a first-person shooter, or the mountain of gems in a mobile game. All shiny, all enticing, and all available for just a few more bucks. But why do we buy into this? Are we programmed to long for the new and unique, even in a virtual setting? Or are we perhaps victims of a cunningly designed system that exploits our inherent desire for distinctiveness and progression? There's no denying it. Microtransactions have significantly altered the way we perceive and interact with video games. But to understand why, we must take a closer look. We need to analyze the psychology behind our seemingly irrational need to splurge on virtual goods, the ethics of such transactions, and ultimately, what it means for the future of gaming. Studies suggest that the psychology of microtransactions is much akin to the principles used in gambling. The excitement of opening a loot box or the appeal of an exclusive, time-limited skin can stimulate the same parts of the brain that gambling does. The anticipation and unpredictability of rewards create a dopamine surge, leading to what psychologists call intermittent reinforcement. This is one of the most powerful motivators for human behavior, keeping players coming back for more. A study by the University of British Columbia found that flashy visuals and sounds, akin to those seen in casinos, further stimulate the reward-related neural circuits. When players associate these sensory experiences with the reward, they are more likely to spend more. Moreover, the use of virtual currency, such as V-Bucks in Fortnite or gems in Clash of Clans, further encourages spending. It's a phenomenon called decoupling, which makes spending real money less apparent as the player focuses more on the in-game value of items rather than their real-world cost. At the crux of the matter, we find ourselves in a realm where psychology and business intertwine. You see, games have always had a knack for making us feel good. When we overcome a difficult level or defeat a formidable opponent, our brains reward us with a nice, hefty dose of dopamine, a neurotransmitter responsible for the feeling of pleasure and satisfaction. It's the same biochemical process that takes place when we eat our favorite food or listen to a great piece of music. Microtransactions cleverly exploit this reward system. They work on the principle of operant conditioning, a term coined by the famous psychologist B.F. Skinner. The idea is pretty straightforward, reward a behavior and you're more likely to see it again. In this case, spend a little extra cash, get a new weapon or a cooler avatar, feel good about it, and you're more likely to do it again. A loop, almost Pavlovian in nature, that keeps us coming back for more. But it's not just about the in-game rewards. It's also about standing out. Humans have a basic need for uniqueness, a desire to differentiate ourselves from the crowd. Gaming companies understand this and have created a plethora of items to satisfy this need. These items, often purely cosmetic, enable players to customize their characters, making them a virtual extension of their personality. A unique avatar in a game can be just as rewarding as having a distinctive style in the real world. While this all might seem innocuous enough, the effects aren't without disputes. Research has suggested a link between the prevalence of in-app purchases and a rise in problem gambling among young people. A 2020 study published in the journal Addiction Research and Theory found that individuals who made in-app game purchases were more likely to be problem gamblers. The researchers highlighted the loot box system, where players paid for a random selection of items, as particularly problematic, drawing parallels with slot machines and other forms of gambling. 
It's worth mentioning that the microtransaction model isn't universally despised. Some argue that it has allowed game developers to continue providing free content updates long after a game's initial release. In 2019, Fortnite, a game widely known for its in-game purchases, brought in a staggering $1.8 billion, much of which was reinvested into maintaining and expanding the game. However, such examples do raise the question, are microtransactions an exploitative cash grab or a necessary evil for the sustainability of the gaming industry? For game developers, microtransactions have introduced an entirely new revenue model, shifting from the traditional one-time purchase model to a continuous revenue stream. This transition allows developers to fund updates, expansions, and improvements to their games long after the initial sale, extending the life cycle of their products and building a long-term relationship with their player base. For players, microtransactions have created a more dynamic and evolving gaming experience. Regular content updates fueled by these transactions keep games fresh and engaging. This revenue model also often allows players to access games for free, opening up high-quality gaming experiences to a broader audience who may not have been able to afford them otherwise. However, the proliferation of microtransactions also brings challenges and considerations for the industry. The rise of so-called whales, players who spend disproportionately large amounts of money on microtransactions has led some game developers to design their games around these high-spending players, potentially to the detriment of the broader player base. Looking ahead, it's clear that they're likely to remain a key part of the gaming industry for the foreseeable future. However, there is an ongoing discussion about how to balance the economic benefits they provide to developers with a fair and enjoyable experience for players. One potential solution that has been proposed is the introduction of spending caps. This approach would limit the amount a player could spend on microtransactions within a certain time frame, reducing the possibility of excessive spending. This system could still provide a steady income for developers while protecting players, particularly those who might be prone to compulsive spending. Another idea that's been floated around is greater transparency in loot box systems, this could involve disclosing the odds of obtaining certain items, so players know exactly what they're getting into when they make a purchase. Some game developers have already started implementing this in response to legislation in certain countries. On the more radical end of the spectrum, some argue for the complete abolition of microtransactions, proposing a return to the traditional one-time payment model. However, this is unlikely given the significant revenue they generate for developers and their role in keeping games continually updated and engaging. The golden age of cheat codes may be over, and the landscape of gaming is transforming. The age of microtransactions is here, and it's reshaping the gaming experience. Whether you're a casual player or a gaming veteran, I hope this discussion has left you with some food for thought. Remember, each purchase, no matter how small, is a vote for the kind of gaming world you want to see. So, thank you for watching, and if you enjoyed this video, please make sure to like and subscribe. And as always, stay curious, keep exploring, and let's dive into the mysteries of our universe together. Thank you.